Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna plant up a couple of large containers. They're the big black square ones that we have at one of the entrances of our cut flower garden, the same pots that we had at the entrance of our property for many years. I love them because they provide such a statement, uh, especially where they're at right now because it looks like they're right out in the middle of nowhere because I don't have much growing that's big out there yet. Uh, hopefully they kind of settle into their position a little bit better once there's some other plants and flowers growing nearby. Uh, but I just love them, even just perched out there in the middle of a field. We had double yellow daffodils in there for spring and it was such a glorious, beautiful display that I'm doing an all yellow and white uh, container planting for summer. Uh, some of these plants are brand new for next year that we're able to try out, so I'm really excited to show them all to you. And I think out there, the white and the yellow just really show up beautifully. I already have everything rounded up out there, so we'll head out and I'll show you all the supplies I'm gonna be using because I will show you how I'm gonna put drip in that container as well. Are you gonna ride with me? I don't know if you like that. You've been in the mulch somewhere. So you can see the containers right here. They really are the perfect scale. And do imagine all of this mulched area here and 15 foot perimeter will all be grass. Maybe even this year we may get that done. I'm not sure. And that will really make them stand out beautifully. And then we have raspberry beds going in right here. It's just a lot of, a lot of projects at the moment. Uh, but you can see that we already have soil in here. That is fresh soil. I brought an extra couple of bags out, one for each pot in case we need to top them up. And then we also have all the drip supplies. So this is what I'm using. This is a quarter inch drip line with emitter holes every six inches. We started doing this last year. Instead of doing individual emitters that kind of spider out from one, you know, one location, we bring the drip tube in and then run a ring of this around the outside. And it worked really, really well really good coverage so really I brought everything out but all I'll need is one T see that so I've got the drip tube that's originating from our water supply line that runs every day out here so the pots will get water every day and I'll tee in to the quarter inch and then we'll just run a loop that will run you know from one side and connect to the other pretty easy now we got to check out these plants I'm so excited about this and here they are <gasps> I'm clearly not going to use all of these plants. I just brought out what I had so I could just use what I needed. Uh, this right here is going to be our centerpiece. This is a new Black Eyed Susan vine that's coming out next season called um, Coconut Appeal. <gasps> Isn't that so beautiful? And I've grown Lemon Appeal, Orange Appeal, Tangerine Slice Appeal, and they're all bright and beautiful. And honestly, like the Lemon Appeal would look really pretty with this arrangement as well. But I think on those black obelisks, this will be so striking. And I'm excited to grow it. They grow like crazy. They kind of sit there for a minute, and then when it gets really, really warm out, they just take off. So I've got two of those, one for each pot. We've got an Angelonia. This is a new one for next year called Cascade Snow. You can see, let's see, let me pull one out. This is a real good one right here. So you can kind of see the growth habit here. It does trail a bit, but it's not like a strict weeper. It doesn't go out the side and then just like take off in a downward motion. It kind of, you can see, kind of grows up and around and undulates. It's a really interesting plant. Um, and I've grown their other Cascade um, Angelonias and they do really, really well, even in our heat and in our sun. This is gonna be our big color show right here. This is the Osteospermum, the Bright Lights Yellow. I've been so impressed with the Bright Lights Osteos. I've grown them in containers, in the ground. They keep on blooming, they just bloom their heads off. No matter where I put them, they can take our hard water, they can take our sun. I'm just a real huge fan of these and I think this is gonna be a really pretty upward um, growing plant. So we'll have our obelisk in the center with the vine. This will be our next layer and then some of these cascading ones will be, you know, going over the sides of course. We've got Supertunia Limoncello here, a very soft yellow, almost kind of a whitish Super tunia. And then a lantana for next year called Luscious Citron. I think that these are even prettier in person than they are on the website, to be honest. These have a little bit more of like a, a softer appearance than on the pictures on the website. They're so beautiful and they love sun and they love heat. So they will love this location. 
out here in the full on sun all day long. White night lobularia, always a good choice, always. One of these plants gets massive. One plant by the end of the season would fill up like the whole area that these plants are sitting in at least. And then we have a new agaratum for next year called artist pearl, which I actually don't think I'm gonna use in this arrangement because I do think it might get swallowed up by some of the other more vigorous growers. I'm gonna try this one somewhere different. But the difference in these new agaratums is that they can withstand the heat um, and they keep blooming, blooming through the summer instead of fizzling out like some of the older varieties. And then I've got a couple Supertunia whites back here. So I'm not really sure what kind of arrangement I'm gonna end up with, except for it's gonna be bright and happy. So we'll tackle the drip system first, and I'll try to get some close-ups, and then we'll probably speed up the planting part. Okay, so this is my water supply line right here. So I'm just gonna take my quarter-inch T and attach it. And then we'll attach one end of our drip tube to one side of the T. And then I looped it all the way around the obelisk and connected it back to the T. And I did bring some landscape staples out to tack it down if we need to, but typically we don't need to do that in the containers because the plants kind of hold it in place. Once I got my initial loop done here, I decided to tee in again on either side and just run a straight piece of drip tube because I'm gonna have my vine right in the center and I wanted water right at its root system. I think it would have probably been fine had the water run long enough. It would soak into the center and be plenty for this plant but I didn't really wanna risk it. So I just decided to do it this way. Just wanted to show you that. Now I'm gonna do the exact same drip setup in the second container. I'm gonna get them planted, then I'll show you what they look like. done. I think they're going to be so absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait to see them fill in. So you can see in the center here, I've got the one Black Eyed Susan vine. I kind of started to trail it up that way and I'll really have to stay on it because it will eventually find its way up. But they are so vigorous, those vines, that it'll be probably trailing out over the sides, which I don't mind a little bit of that, but I really want it to kind of like bulk up around the obelisk. And then I used four of the osteos, so one at every corner of the obelisk, and then four of the citron lantanas, so in between each one of the osteos. And then I used three of each of the following, limoncello supertunia, white night lobularia, and then the Cascade Snow Angelonia. And I just kind of did that same pattern repeat around the perimeter of the container. So the whole thing should just be this bright, sunshiny looking arrangement. And here's the other one right here. I think too, since we decided to paint the fence black in the background, I think that these really light, I mean, though yellow's not light, but white and this bright yellow will really shine. And you know, Aaron popped out here for a few minutes while I was planting and he said, you know, it would look really pretty if we planted a boxwood hedge around the exterior, like the perimeter of the cut flower garden. And I think that that would be absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it will have grass all the way around it, so it will provide that cool kind of weight um, and uh, kind of a distinction for this area, but having a little, like a touch of formality, I keep saying it's not gonna be formal out here, and it won't be in the corners where we're planting all the trees and all of that and the meadow sections, but this cut flower garden already kind of has a formal layout, so that's something we may do in the future, I don't know. But for now, I'm super excited about these containers. I think that they're gorgeous. We've moved the savanna urns to the other entrance over there. I think I'm pointing at them right there. And so we'll probably be planting those up next. Anyway, we will give you updates on these containers as the season progresses. They should be happy out here in the full sun all day long. The only thing that could potentially make them unhappy is our heavy winds. So that's something I'll be able to report on later. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one.